So um, to kick off, um, straight from the beginning, I'm going to introduce a, a, a brand new uh, term here, primes. So um, <clears throat> there might be some confusion uh, around what is primes, what is progress, is it the same, is it different? Um, some of you might have heard this term primes before. Um, as it stands, uh, you know, it goes for population registration and identity management ecosystem. Uh, the way UNHCR has designed their corporate tools uh, is effectively a modular system. So instead of having, you know, one giant software that, uh, you know, caters to all the, the various different aspects of beneficiary um, data management, um, we have a number of different tools that all act together. They're all interoperable within each other and hence the ecosystem part. So Primes is an umbrella term that we use for all our corporate systems which are integrated with each other. Um, this is kind of how it looks. So in the center we have uh, what we call the, the Primes core modules. Um, here we have progress version four. Um, this is what we're going to be focusing on today. This is um, pretty much the heaviest uh, tool that we have. Uh, this is our core registration and identity management and case management system. Um, this joins in with BIMS, uh, which is the Biometric Identity Management System. So in UNHCR, as opposed to, for example, WFP Scope, where uh, Scope does the data management, assistance management, plus the biometric uh, identity management all together in one tool. In UNHCR, this is split into two separate tools, uh, one which manages the data and the case management uh, aspect and BIMS, which manages the biometric aspect um, of the identity management process. These two tools are obviously interlinked and they work in tandem with each other. Uh, next up, we also see we have what we call the rapid enrollment app. This is effectively an online version, uh, sorry, offline version of uh, the progress. Uh, it has limited functionality, primarily uh, registration and um, data um, intake uh, role. Uh, we use this in uh, emergency settings. We use it in settings where connectivity is um, not adequate enough or not fast enough to, to manage progress. Um, lastly, in the core modules, we have uh, the data port. Uh, this is our kind of combined um, refugee uh, statistics aggregate level uh, data uh, center. Uh, this is where we can get very quick uh, high level figures uh, coming from all the different registration databases that we have globally. Uh, now, as I mentioned, these are all um, modular and they're integrated with different systems. Up here, we have uh, the state civil registry systems in some certain country operations. Um, we have a connection with uh, country uh, countries inherent um, registration uh, systems. Uh, on the right hand side, we see further UNHCR tools, which are all managing very particular aspects of the beneficiary uh, management. So most commonly known are, for example, the, the global distribution tool GDT. This manages, um, for example, assistance distribution, among other things. We have cash assist, uh, which uh, manages um, the cash assistance aspect. Uh, we have rice, which is kind of an assistance tracking uh, tool which is used in the Middle East and a couple of other um, uh, different uh, tools. Uh, the other one which might uh, be what better known is Kobo, uh, which is based on ODK. It's a surveying tool that's also part of here. It's not listed. Uh, we then have, of course, partner tools, uh, UNICEF's Primero, Scope. Um, these are in various stages integration and um, collaboration. 
Um, Uh, Progress version 4, um, this is our latest version uh, of Progress. Um, the development of Progress has begun uh, in the early 2000s. Um, of course, as technology moves on, um, the, the, the need for a more robust uh, data collection and data management system became very much apparent. As in the 90s, we were using Excel sheets, before that ledgers, and it quickly became apparent that uh, simple databases uh, are just not sufficient to cover all the different aspects uh, regarding beneficiary um, data management. So uh, that's when progress came to be. And um, it's not just a database. It's not just a place where we record information. Uh, it's much more capable than that, as we are going to see later on. Um, progress, of course, on the one part, it does take in the beneficiary data, but on the other hand, it manages what we call the identity management aspect of it. Throughout what we call the refugee life cycle, uh, whereas which would start from a person becoming a refugee until uh, that person is no longer considered a refugee. Um, this, there are many aspects in this re refugee life cycle which go way beyond just simple uh, data capture and data management. Uh, so as we are going to see later on, progress attempts to cover all these different aspects in one place in order um, for us to be able to provide better protection um, and services uh, to the refugees. The latest version, Progress version 4, uh, the biggest leap here is that um, we went completely online with version 4. So it's a centralized system um, globally deployed to 98 operations, as you see on uh, the screen, uh, with um, further deployments ongoing. We have altogether 14.4 million individuals registered in progress. Out of these, 8.4 million uh, are active uh, or on hold um, currently in the system. So they are what we consider the active uh, refugee beneficiaries or persons of concern currently in the operation. We have over uh, 6,900 active users. Now, it's important to mention that this is not only UNHCR users, as progress is also used by partners in uh, quite a lot of operations, be that uh, implementing partners, strategic partners, or government partners. So here are some of the key uh, differences of Progress version 4 uh, compared to um, previous iterations of the software. So as I mentioned before, it's online uh, with a consolidated uh, database. This means that previously we had localized databases, uh, especially in larger operations where you had uh, different uh, theater of operations. Uh, it was quite a meticulous and difficult task to constantly keep a countrywide database synchronized. Now with version four, this problem is solved because uh, all the data is automatically synced up on a global level. Um, we have standardized different workflows. I'm gonna uh, touch base a little bit on that uh, later on. Um, and the whole uh, data base is um, more regulated. It is more structured. Uh, compared to previous iterations. So what we have now, as we are going to see, is that Progress version 4 itself is built on a modular basis. Um, we are going to dive into what that means, but effectively the software itself has different modules which uh, cater for different aspects of the beneficiary information management process. Um, here we have uh, what the core modules which we are going to talk about today is the registration module. This is where we will be capturing and updating uh, refugee data sets. Um, in uh, progress, in every country operation, uh, we have individuals 
And of course, these individuals are then organized into what we call registration groups for WFP colleagues. Uh, this is very similar uh, to what you would say a household it is. Uh, it is very important to distinguish though these two terms and there are a couple of terms uh, between WFP and UNHCR which sound similar but actually mean different things in a different context. So registration group uh, is often asked what is the difference between a registration group and a household. Um, a registration group is effectively an administrative grouping of the individuals just determined at the time of registration. Now, normally, in most cases, this will in fact overlap with a household. This will in fact overlap with a, a traditional family unit. Um, but it is important to distinguish that in WFP household has a more wider understanding. It, it normally refers to uh, groups uh, of individuals who share um, an economic uh, dependency with each other. So in progress, registration groups is a little bit more of a restrictive term compared to um, the households. Um, apart from registration groups, individuals can also be part of what we call cases. And this is where the case management aspect of progress comes in. So as I mentioned before, progress isn't just a database where we just collect information. Um, we also use it to process different cases. Uh, what, are, what am I talking about here? Um, we can be talking about refugee status de determination cases, resettlement cases, child protection cases, protection case management uh, in itself. All of these are managed in different modules of progress. However, they all build on the same registration data that we collect. So an individual is administratively grouped inside the registration group, but may be part in different uh, various cases um, that can pop up during their refugee life cycle. So as I mentioned, uh, this is just a brief overview of uh, the structure, uh, sorry, here. Um, within the modules that I mentioned, uh, the data is um, grouped into what we call entities. Uh, these entities form of a module. So the best example, and we are going to take a look at what this actually means, is the registration module, which will have different subgroups of data, which actually make up this complete module. Uh, the way the data is um, siloed in in progress is uh, what we call business units. So a business unit um, can mean, for example, a complete country. If it's uh, if we are talking about, for example, a, a, a smaller country operation, it's likely that that country operation will have one business unit. In that business unit, uh, all the refugees registered inside that country will belong under that business unit. This is important, especially from data protection uh, and privacy points of view, as users of progress are assigned their user rights based on business units. So a user working, let's say, in the Cameroon operation will have access to the Cameroon business unit, but will not be able to see um, right, so there can be uh, operations where there is a need to further distinguish and further structure the data uh, based on different aspects. So a good example is, for example, Bangladesh where we have three business units within the country. Um, this is because we have three distinct group of refugees, which they are in the same country, but have very different um, needs, demands and aspects. And the viewing and sharing of this data needs to be further segregated. So <clears throat> business units is the larger kind of grouping of um, 
the data. Uh, as I mentioned, individuals are grouped into registration groups. However, individuals, as mentioned, can be part of different um, cases. Uh, these cases have standard workflows uh, based on UNHCR processes. Uh, so, for example, if we have a status determination case where one individual belongs to, um, Progress version 4 manages that entire process and it goes through this kind of standard uh, processing and, and the software manages that uh, based on the user's inputs. Um, these are the entities. The entities are actually, uh, which are, as I mentioned before, they make up the, the different modules and the entities are what actually hold uh, the actual data, which we are going to refer to as records uh, inside progress. So, um, for example, uh, this is a good example here. We can see the registration module and the registration module is, for example, made up of three different entities, registration groups, registration individuals and receptions and reception groups. Um, I'm going to um, talk about reception groups in a moment. Uh, but what this means uh, really is that all the data that's being stored in progress, um, this data is stored on different levels. So there are certain data elements that are only applicable uh, to individuals. Let's say mother's name or father's name or gender, date of birth, right? So the, this kind of these records, these data elements, they only pertain to individuals and not to registration groups. Vice versa, there are certain uh, data elements which only pertain to registration groups. Um, so this is the way we kind of segregate the different data uh, records inside progress, depending on which entity they belong to. Um, and as the entities make up the, the modules, we have all these different modules inside progress. Um, you know, you can see the list here. Obviously, the most important one is the registration uh, module, as that is where the data is being uh, gathered and updated. And based on the registration modules database, that's where all the other modules build upon. So. Of course, uh, the more important ones are you know, the refugee status determinations, resettlement. We have an assistance module which manages the assistance uh, aspect of uh, the beneficiaries, repatriation, protection module, child protection, SGBV, and then we also have a fraud module to manage fraud cases related to beneficiaries. Now, it is important to note that while Progress version 4 is a global tool and it's a globally standardized tool, um, what parts of Progress is being used in which country operation, in which context can differ wildly, right? So there might be operations where there are no resettlement uh, programs ongoing. So in that country, for example, they're not going to be using the resettlement module. There might be different data elements collected in different country operations. Um, so there is, oops. There we go. So um, different country operations have a different level uh, of how they use, how they manage, and how they fill up progress version 4. There is a set of minimum data which is required to register an individual. Uh, we are going to look at uh, what that minimum data set is. But apart from that, uh, progress, as we will see, has quite a large um, area which can be filled up uh, with information depending on the country operations needs but it is not mandatory to do so. So it's very contextual as to what kind of data will we find in different country operations progress databases. 